Hello everybody, welcome to another junk journal with me video. This video, as per usual, I'm not really sitting down to document anything in particular, I'm just having fun creating in my journal. These first pages are actually one where, okay, I'll give you some background. So when you're doing memory keeping, whether it be scrapbooking, creative journaling, whatever, often what you do is you get a photo or something else you're documenting, like a, a letter or something, and you create your spread around that photo. So say the photo's got some blue in it, you might do a blue background, or if the photo's about something in particular, say, I don't know, food, then you do, might do a food-related spread or background. But sometimes I like to do the opposite and just have some fun creative time, use random things, maybe like they're slightly matching and stuff, and then find something to document with it. So do it sort of the other way around, or just put something in random that doesn't necessarily match what's going on in, in the background, but it's a junk journal, so it doesn't matter. So what I started off with these pages, I really had no idea what I was gonna add to them. I just, as I said, I was grabbing random things. That flowery paper is from a We Are Memory Keepers typecast paper pad, and as you saw, I just sort of ripped around the flowers, sort of like the ripping version of fussy cutting, went around the edges with oxide, that little sort of mini file folder thing, that is from um, the Pink Paisley Cella V collection, which is ancient in uh, the scrapbooking world now. It's years and years old, and I kind of forgot I had these little file folders. So I just used them, and as it's kind of like, there's a slight girliness going on, like with the pink flowers and like the pinkish wood grain on that file folder, I thought I'd add one of my printable vintage adverts that are in my shop and there's this beauty box one that says Milady Toilet Soap, so I just sort of, that was nice and girly and I thought I'd add that. My printables, just in case you are interested, obviously I will link them, but for those of you who can't or won't for whatever reason use printers, then I have them available as printed ephemera, like you can buy them like an ephemera pack. Anyway, enough advertising. Um, so once I'd done all those things, I added some pretty washy here and there. Um, the little piece on the right, the little flappy piece, is actually a little pocket that I uh, sewed into the journal and I had a little note card sent from someone recently so I've just popped that in there so it's just there I can open it sometimes and go, oh yeah, there was that thing that happened. Um, so that picture of me that I've put in the little file folder and the journaling I've done about that is basically, um, as well as having a chronic illness, I also have um, a ba really bad back problems, which are not actually related to my illness, but they're there. Um, and I have been having osteo osteo osteopathy, there we go for it. And basically I was doing my osteopathic exercises on the floor one morning before I got dressed and I got stuck, like my back just got stuck and thankfully I had my phone nearby and I was like ringing people to come and help me because I could not get myself up off the floor um, and no one was answering so I just lay there for ages on my phone unable to move and I took a selfie because I thought it was quite funny. I did get rescued in the end obviously but yeah so that's what the journaling was about. I just cut a piece of um, rhodia paper just to sort of fold up into that file folder. I added some stickers here and there. The flower ones are from my own watercolour florals collection and if you saw that other sticker I used that was like a woman like bent over I thought that was quite funny to use in relation to a problem I had with my back. And then obviously, as you saw, that page came together really, really quickly, so I was able to move on to another one. For this one, I am simply just documenting that I bought another fountain pen because I have a fountain pen problem, and I bought another one. It was Fountain Pen Day, like International Fountain Pen Day on the 1st of November, and um, there were sales, and I bought a fountain pen that I really, really wanted. So I have just grabbed washi that has like handwriting all over it, put that around the edges of the page. That paper I've got there with the handwriting on is from my antique handwritten printables as well in my shop. I just, I love when I document stuff about fountain pens, I like using handwritten things. I just, obviously they go hand in hand together. Um, I went around the edges of that paper with Distress Oxide and Vintage Photo, give it that vintage effect. And I just did a little bit of journaling on another scrap of paper, used my tab punch to create a little tab for it because I thought it would look cute. 
said what I did, said what I bought, and then I'm just sticking in this little leaflet that came with the pen that shows the different colours they do in that particular pen, and I think that's pretty much, oh no, I think I'm going to add some little stickers and stuff. Oh, a little scrap of paper here where I am just um, doing like a little fountain pen count, like what my current number is, and I thought that was kind of appropriate because on the other page I have my washi tape count as well, so those two things, things I collect and yes, have far too many of. I'm just finishing off with a couple of stickers. Um, these ones I'm putting down are shop stock that go in my journal kits and journals, and that little pen one I put down is from my I Heart stationery collection. Um, I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm really advertising at you, it's just sometimes I'm doing journaling and I think, I'm not using my own stuff and I really should use my own stuff, so I wasn't doing it to advertise as it is, I was doing it because I wanted to use my own stuff. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, last little spread here. Um, this is a cat related one. Um, I am a cat's protection sponsor and the way their sponsorship, <coughs> struggling with words, the way their sponsor, sponsor, why can't I say that word? Sponsorship, there we go. The way that works is you don't sponsor a cat because obviously the goal is to get the cats adopted. So you sponsor one of their pens and then they update you with what cat is in the pen that you sponsor. So you couldn't log in online and stuff and see what cat's in there, but then every quarter they send you like a seasonal thing and it, there's a little picture of the cat and stuff. So I used the envelope that my winter update came in. That black cat you can see the photo of there, that's the current cat in my pen and it just breaks my heart because he's a black cat and he looks like my cat and I just, oh, I just can't. I actually had to, um, when I started sponsoring, I chose a center that was like as far away almost as possible. So I'm right on the Southeast coast and I chose a, a cat's protection shelter all the way up in Glasgow. Cause I knew if I was anywhere near the place where they would send me updates about what cat was in that thing, then every single quarter I'd be like, right, I'm adopting another cat. <laughs> and I'm not really in a position to have any more cats. So anyway, I should probably talk about what I'm actually doing. As you saw, I used the envelope that my um, sponsorship stuff came in. I cut it in half and I've just used that as a pocket. All those black cat things um, that I've used are from one of my own collections. Again, sorry, don't mean to advertise at you. That's just what I'm using. My own black cat collection and also some other black cat stickers here and there. Um, this is my big folder of photos of my own cat, so I thought I'd bring him into this cat-related spread. What I was writing on those little scraps of paper as well is a cat poem, which is by uh, J.R. Tolkien. Um, it's, I won't read out the poem to you because that would be boring, but if you just Google like Tolkien cat poem, it's a great poem and I love it. So I did, yeah, I wrote that on there. I've tipped that into the tipping that's already on the page. And then on the other side of that, there's a picture of my cat Conan, who in his pose, it's very suitable to what the poem says about cats. And then just washi everywhere. I have so much cat washi. So just using all strips of that. And then again, with stickers, again, I have a lot of cat stickers. I'm just, I'm a cat person. So I just collect cat related things, particularly cat related craft supplies. And those stickers I'm using there are actually stickers I made of pictures of my own cat. So <laughs> yeah, it's one of the first things I did when I got a silhouette for the first time years and years ago, like made stickers of my own cat and I love them. And that is that spread complete. And that's all the spreads I have for this video. I feel like time has run away with me a bit on this one. Like I've gone through them very quickly, but I have been yakking an awful lot in this video about nothing. So apologies if you didn't like that. But anyways, those are the spreads. I'm just showing them to you there now. And that's it. So thank you so, so much for watching. I will leave relevant links in the description box to stuff that I use in this video. Um, please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. As always, please chat to me down in the comments. Always love talking to everyone. And yes, I think that is it. I am going. Bye-bye.